Hi, this is going to be a follow-up video to my previous mailbag one where right at the end of the mailbag, somebody sent in this thing which looked like just some no-name generic tester board from eBay. There were like no instructions, no nothing, there's no labeling on it, uh, you know, it, it just like what the hell was this thing? And I just sort of, you know, brushed it aside and Quite rightly, I copped a lot of flack for this. So, yep, sorry, I should have at least put it through its paces. So, here we go. We're going to take a look at one of these um, $7, I, you can might even be able to get it slightly cheaper, $7 delivered uh, LCR meter slash transistor tester slash component analyzer slash whatever you want to call this thing. Now, I, I was aware that these kind of things existed, but I hadn't, hadn't been following the 156 page EEV blog forum thread on this. That's not posts, that's pages. So please forgive me that I'm not going to go back and read the entire 156 page thread about these things. Now, this particular one, I've found it on eBay and it's the M328, but it goes under various different names and it calls itself, you power it up, calls itself the M Tester. Um, like, there's no other, like, information on here and that's one of the things like I know it's only seven bucks but is it too hard to actually you know silk screen on there what this thing actually does or something like that I don't know it would have been handy anyway let's get into it apparently it's a component tester and apparently it's pretty good these have a big following lots of fanboys out there and people wanted me to test it out so let's give it a go this is this particular M3281 and yes I do have a brand new battery because if you noticed in the mailbag if I used one that had a much lower voltage which by the way does not uh, show up like seven point something volts. There you go. The contrast is just unreadable on this thing, even though it doesn't give you a low battery warning error message. So there's the first problem with this thing. Now I know that there are dozens and dozens of variations on this thing, if not hundreds of variations on this thing. People put them in their own uh, do-it-yourself housings and all sorts of stuff. I believe the one, like the first one was like a, a regular two-line 16 character LCD. This is a particular uh, graphics uh, based one. And we can whack a component in here. And that's what the numbers are there for. It's got three different terminals and it's got it presumably duplicated over here. I haven't tried it for uh, power transistor pads. And you can plug a component into any part of that. Just power it on and it simply does a test. There it is, a 100 ohm resistor between pins one and three. Beautiful. So yes, I have no idea what firmware version this is running, what variant, what, uh, you know, schematic variant this thing is. It's just a generic eBay M328. So yeah, um, uh, take that as it is. Now, one of the first problems I have with this thing is, well, this particular unit in particular is the backlight. So let's switch it on. And it's just like, it's pissing away the power. Like why they need that backlight. I've got a capacitor in there now, 100N. Like a lot of that will be the backlight. Like why? Oh, frustrating. Anyway, this thing is really quite jazzy. Look, if I put a uh, transistor in there, just got one out of the junk, din, but junk bin. What is it? A BD137, I think it is. Let's power it on and have a look. And I do like the automatic nature of this. It is very nice. Look at that. It's automatically uh, identified the transistor, which, you know, base collector emitter on which particular uh, pin there. And it gives us the HFE and the... Uh, forward voltage, uh, but at what current, I don't know. So we can actually take that, flip it around, and see if it works the same. You basically got to press the button each time, it just repowers it, basically. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. So there's obviously a lot of refinement that's gone into this uh, firmware, and, and I'm sure uh, firmware is totally different across many different uh, variants of this, the countless different variants of this uh, product. But this one, I mean, I tried resistors, capacitors, and transistors now, and it, it's just very nice. So 
Yeah, um, huge thumbs up to this. Where this originally comes from, who's writing this code, who's building it, I don't know the history uh, behind this. It's probably some huge mashup of code over time. I don't know if anyone's, like, does anyone know the original developer of this? But I've seen projects like this for going back, you know, decades in the magazines and things like that. So I, I don't think it's particularly new. And I guess I don't mind the use of a uh, ZIF socket like this for uh, testing. It's okay, you know, like, it, it's fine. Especially for, like, seven bucks, I remember. Like, seven bucks delivered. I remember when the ZIF sockets like this used to cost seven bucks. And text tool, it doesn't have 3M on it, does it? So it's probably just some, um, yeah, one hung low variant. Anyway, I'm going to try and fool the crap out of this thing because um, I don't know what range of stuff it tests. The, uh, I'll plug in a 7805. I don't expect it to work at all. It'll probably confuse it and say it's something else. But let's try it. No, no, unknown or damaged part. There you go. It didn't, it went, well, that's outside the bounds of what I know about. I only know about these particular parts and it doesn't test like any of them. So that's pretty groovy. Don't mind that at all. Come on. Can't fool it. Can't fool it. Surely it's going through all its routines. No, it doesn't know what that is. Nice. Does it know what a red lead is? There you go. You can see it pulsing. Ah, there you go. Well, it says it's a diode, which is exactly what it is. Um, it's just a light emitting diode and uh, two volts. And it says it even gives you the capacitance for the diode four puff. Isn't that jazzy? So I'll just repeat that. I turned it around and put it in different ones. Yeah, that's pretty repeatable. Nice. Green diode there. Sweet. We'll try a VN10K MOSFET here. But... Wah, fail. It thinks it's an NPN transistor. Hmm. So that's interesting. It knows it's acting like a transistor, which it is. It's just a MOSFET. Um, and it is an N-channel MOSFET, so it's got that right. And the HN, it knows that the gain is massive, but it hasn't identified that it's actually a MOSFET instead of a bipolar. And as for capacitors, it just gives us capacitance, but I had it before. It was showing up what's called VLOS which it was 0.1%, which I, like, I can't get it to do it again, but I swear it came up. There it is, 0.1%. So I assume that's the dissipation factor. So let's compare that with a real LCR tester and see what we get. 94.8 at one kilohertz, I believe the test frequency is. Yeah, it's not quite there, but for ballpark measurements, like component identification, I mean, it's, it's just fine, so I'm not going to quibble over that. And as for that uh, voltage loss there, there you go, dissipation factor, you know, point, it said 0.1%, eh, 0.03, near enough. Aha, uh -huh, it starts to give us more info. If we had put an electrolytic in there, I was wondering if it was going to do the ESR, and certainly it does, 1.6 ohms, 48.88, with a 1% uh, uh, dissipation factor. And we're getting 1.6 ohms there, which is uh, pretty good for the ESR. Once again, for component ID, it's it's doing the job just fine. Okay, so let's try the resistance over a uh, entire range here. I wouldn't quibble over anything less than one uh, ohm. I haven't included test leads here, so that's just fine. 10.8, 101, 1009, 10.08, 101. Getting a little bit out, but you know, one meg, still pretty schmick. Let's see if we can do 10 meg. Hey, that's not bad at all. I am liking that. Let's say, let's go up to say something difficult, like 50 meg. That's not easy to, yeah, no unknown part. So what does it do? Go up to, you know, 20 meg or something. That's fine. That's great. So that seems to be reasonably accurate over the entire range. Don't mind that at all. Okay, let's try a big cap 2200 microfarad electrolytic. Let's go. It's, uh, I, I measured at 1869 on my LCR meter, and uh, was it 0.05 ESR? 0.18, it's a little bit out, um, 1965, but, like, it doesn't matter. I'm happy with that. Just for component identification, that's a winner. But you saw it there had 0.9% V loss, and, you know, like, that doesn't match anything doing with any sort of, uh, at one kilohertz, the uh, dissipation quality factor of this thing. So I, I'm not sure what's going on there. Now it's supposed to be able to measure uh, MOSFETs, but of course you saw it uh, fail with that uh, uh, VN10K uh, one there. So let's put in this IRF610 
And give that a bow. I'll be very impressed if it can, uh, it's supposed to do the, hey, wow, okay. Consider me suitably impressed. Look at that. That's impressive. End channel MOSFET. Even get like, and it shows the internal uh, diode and let's whack that around like that. Okay, so I didn't like the VN10K uh, one, but it certainly does the business on this IRF610. That's very impressive. And really, you don't care about the parameters that much. It's not a, you know, a precision bit of kit. It's a component identifier, um, essentially. So, you know, that's pretty much all you want. Let's try one again. We've got an IRF9110 P-channel MOSFET. So let's give that one a bell. Nice. <laughs> that's, that's worth its weight in gold. And let's do a uh, desoldered salvaged uh, 50N06, shall we? Pretty standard part. Oh, no, it can't handle the uh, solder on the pins all that well. Let's give that a bell. Uh-oh. Wah, 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 wah. Hang on, might not be making contact. Ha, -ha! works a treat. <laughs> a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, let's try a surface mount bipolar tranny here. Got a uh, double two. Double two for those playing along at home. Let's see if we can... Ah, that's my LCR meter turning off. So I'll hold it down on there. I don't like those pads, but it's obviously working in this case. Neat. All right, let's try a 3.9 volt Zener diode. See what we get. Hey, look at that. That is bang on to what you want. Like, it doesn't tell you it's a Zener diode, but it's implying it's a Zener diode because it's got the forward voltage. Yeah, it's not quite there, 3.9 volts. Actually, going to... At these low voltages, for these low voltage zen, it's going to depend heavily on the test current. So, yeah, don't, like, that's good enough, right? And then it knows that the diode in the opposite direction is your standard silicon drop like that. So from that, you can infer it's a, you know, 3.5-ish volt zener. Neat. Just got another little ceramic uh, cap here, but you can see that um, I'll, I'll show you that the um, the, dis the supposed dissipation factor is going to be, you know, it, it, it's fairly out on this. So I wouldn't really take that um, as anything meaningful, you know, 0.6% V loss. It, it, you know, it's near enough on the capacitance. Just use it for component ID. It seems to be grossly out on... Um, you know, it depends. Maybe there's a sweet spot of capacitance where, you know, it does fairly well on that. But, you know, I, some I've measured just aren't anywhere even in the ballpark. And I just did a little, little uh, thousand micro Henry or one milli Henry inductor, surface mount inductor there just by holding it on there. And that did a reasonable job. There you go. There's the resistance of that and the inductance of that at one kilohertz. So it's pretty close. Nice. And that's a 10 micro Henry inductor, but it doesn't seem to really look at the resolution there. It's pretty terrible. And it can't measure a 1 micro Henry at all. It just thinks it's a resistor. And, well, that's fine. It's got a lower limit. So there you go. I'm actually uh, very impressed by this little thing. It's amazing what you can get out of just a little uh, 80 mega micro. Some very clever uh, software that's no doubt uh, been... Uh, much refined over time and a couple of passives and uh, other stuff there's a couple of trannies in there and a few diodes you know there's really nothing to these things and it, you can build these yourself I'm just, like there are countless designs out there apparently and I'll link in the uh, EV blog forum to this thing all 156 pages of it so for seven bucks delivered this thing is just magical um definitely get one but i'd recommend uh like maybe get like spending a bit more and getting one that has a case with proper banana uh jacks on it or something that you can plug you know little uh lcr type test leads into or something like that or you can make your own you can just buy the bare bones one like this and you know, get rid of the zip socket or even have it on the front panel, make your own case, do what a 3D printed case, do whatever. Make a little do-it-yourself project out of it, because these things are quite impressive. Don't use it as a substitute for a real LCR meter to take, you know, quantitative measurements of parts. Um, That's not what it's for. It's for, you know, a basic component identifier, go, no-go tester. You know, it gives you a ballpark figure. It seems reasonably accurate, though. 
for various capacitances or resistances, and it doesn't go that uh, low in inductance and stuff like that. But for transistor identification, like I wouldn't be taking the beta for granted and you know stuff like that. So there seems to be a large community of people actually, you know, hacking around with these things and changing the firmware and changing the design and, you know, doing their own builds and things like that, which is fantastic. So it's um, definitely worth having one of these things in your kit, especially, you know, for the price. If you're on a budget, then, you know, seven bucks delivered for a component identifier and basic measure, you know, basic measurement tool like this, just fantastic. It almost, you know, practically can't be beat. And, but there are tons of variations of this, as I said. So um, apparently can, uh, well, some others I've read do, uh, you know, SCR thyristors and stuff like that. I don't have any of those uh, handy here. But uh, it's impressive the amount of components that they can do. And it can do like MOSFETs like that. That's just fantastic. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give the video a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.